So imagine this. You're out on the tool truck, having a peruse around, and the tool rep says, hey, check out this fancy new tool, brand new, greatest thing to the market. Why don't you have this to try? And just because it's the newest, latest, greatest thing that they say, you get that impulse buy and you're just like, yeah, that's actually a pretty good price. I'll go ahead and buy that one or I'll upgrade from the one that I had to that one. Well, this is gonna be my list of five things that I regret buying. They're maybe not, bad quality by any means, but those things that I bought on kind of an impulse whim or off, off of whatever the snap-on or other truck guys said, and I ended up either A, not using them, or B, they're just junk. Like I said, some of these tools, they're not really bad tools, and maybe in some applications, they might work fantastic for what you do, but in my certain circumstances, the tools just did not end up fitting the bill of what I thought they were professionally able to do. Uh, first one on the list, we're gonna come to the Astro Pneumatic uh, 1442. This is a riv nut installer. So for Chrysler and Mopar, we install a lot of running boards. So I thought, you know, what makes it easier, how they install their riv nuts into the body and the frame for uh, installing running boards or other brackets. Uh, they'll actually just give you a bolt and a sleeve and a nut to be able to install these riv nuts. And I always thought, man, there's gotta be something better and easier than this. So I bought this Astro Pneumatic Riv Nut Installer. So works great, fantastic tool. I'm not gonna say anything bad about the quality or anything of it, but other than the fact that I really didn't take into account how big it is. And most of the time this tool, in the circumstances that I, in which I want to be able to use it, and which most circumstances of using it on any car, you're not gonna have room to put this big rib nut installer. Like I said, works great, comes with uh, seven different bits and different sizes to the ends of it. Also comes with a bunch of packs of rib nuts and everything with it too. It's actually a pretty good buy, it was like 70 bucks. But, like I said, to the fact of most extent, uh, you guys are installing rib nuts on uh, the inner portions of the fenders, this doesn't fit in between there. You guys are installing them inside underneath the uh, consoles, trying to put brackets on, doesn't fit in there. In the engine bay, doesn't fit anywhere in there. So one of those things where flashiness is not always best and make sure you look at the surroundings of which you're gonna be using your tools. So number one on my list of tools I wish I wouldn't have bought was the Astro Pneumatic 1442 Riv Nut Installer. Next on our list, we're gonna have a look at the Milwaukee right angled screw drill. Now, this drill, I thought originally this thing was gonna be the cat's ass because I work on a lot of cabinetry uh, on the inside of conversion vans, inside dashes, of having to screw holes inside of the, those areas uh, quite often. So I really wanted something to be able to put my drill bits into, and this was what was out on the market at the time. And unfortunately, it's just not that great of a tool. The delay on the tool is pretty significant. Even if setting it all the way at certain different settings, it's even worse when you set it to a lower setting. Uh, the battery life on this one is not all that great unless you guys are using the larger batteries. And at the point of using a larger battery, it kind of takes away the idea of having it compact and nice 90 degree angle to fit into those smaller spaces. On top of that, the chucked head, it takes up more room than you really think because the insert where you put your drill bits down into is not all that deep either. So you guys really have to get some of those jobber, the smaller drill bits to be able to even think about working on this inside of the conversion van cabinets. Uh, the power levels on this thing, they work okay. Uh, I haven't had anything really go wrong or anything other than that with it, other than it just doesn't really perform up to the standard of what I thought it would. I ended up doing a replacement and getting the uh, snap-on right angle 
screw gun here for this one. And I ended up getting the chucked version because the head on this one is quite a lot smaller. Plus I'm able to use, which I actually use Milwaukee bits inside of this one for being able to use that for the chucked head. Uh, the chucked head is quite a bit smaller as you guys can see. It's got about an inch or, sh or so shorter head to it. Uh, it's got more uh, capability of putting this thing to either full drill or down to a d bunch of different uh, detents on how hard it works. Battery life on this one is going to be a little bit better, but it's also because it's a 14.4 battery. Uh, it's not as much as stepping up to the larger M12 batteries on the uh, Milwaukee's, but it does work a lot better in the circumstances that I needed to. So that one ended up fitting the bill a lot better than what the Milwaukee right angle drill did. Now we're going to get to a couple of the other ones that come from the Snap-on variety that I ended up purchasing off the truck. The next one uh, that just didn't fit the bill was going to be the Snap-on EXDL10 extractor bit set. So this one has a 10 piece set to it. Uh, the case, it does have a de pretty decent case other than the bits kind of fall out if you don't open the case exactly right and they get caught just like that. Uh, the bits that are in here that are actually drill bits, they are reverse thread. So that makes it a little bit easier for the extractors to catch on to if there is any kind of windings that uh, end up drilling through these. The problem that I have with this kit is these are not very well hardened at all. I'm pretty sure I've replaced more of these bits than I have any other drill bit of any other manufacturer quality in the history of me using drill bits. So not only that, the drill bits is, has that going for them, but the extractors also, in the way of extractors and easy outs, you know, you guys usually start off and may abuse these a little bit. I've had quite a few years experience with using extractors and these ones are not anything fancy when it comes to extractors. This kit definitely is not worth the $87 that I originally paid for it. Uh, way overpriced and like I said, I've had these replaced or had to replace them on my own because I just got pissed and snapped them off anyways. Uh, that. They definitely were worth the cost. Uh, there are some snap-on extractors that are a lot better than these, but this specific kit fell way short in the way of quality, and I would definitely not recommend to get a set of these ones any longer. This is a snap-on EXDL10, fallen short. Next up on our list, we're gonna come to the Snap-on YAS32A. This is the butane soldering iron kit. It comes with, I believe, six different tips for soldering the actual soldering iron itself in this case, and a sponge for cleaning everything off. Uh, the problem that I had with this one is the output on it is just horrendous. If you're gonna use this thing for soldering first off, you better have at least 10 to 15 minutes to be able to get the tip hot enough to be able to solder anything worth a damn. Other than that, you might be able to do soldering within five to six minutes on some small wires, but you're gonna be waiting at least 10 minutes for this thing to heat up big enough to do some like 14 gauge wire solder. It's just not that hot of a tool. On top of that, a lot of the things I really wanted to use this for was for doing heat shrink. So they usually have these tips that don't have any kind of tip end to them for soldering. It's just open and you're supposed to have the heat and the flame come out. On this specific version, the tip for these is about an inch and a half long, which really takes down on the heat output of this. So you're really not getting a whole lot of heat output when it comes to time to actually using them on the end. I have to hold the heat shrink usually within a half an inch of the tip to be able to heat shrink it down all the way that I need. Uh, butane on this thing also, this thing eats up butane. I will go through the full tank of this thing, the capacity of butane for it, in approximately 20 to 30 minutes of use, the whole tank. And of course you already have to have it turned all the way up because it's not getting that hot. All in all, I just, I don't like it. It didn't work for what I need it to. I don't think it works very well at all. I haven't got a chance to check out the new uh, 42 series, which is the newer, larger snap-on version of it. Uh, it wasn't out at the time that I purchased this one. I purchased this one for like $110, which was, I thought a pretty good deal at the time, but 
really in the long run it's just a crappy tool that i ended up not being able to use for what i intended it for and ended up getting something totally different and this one fell way short on the list and last but not least on lists of tools that i wish i had never bought was the pt850 now i know this is going to be something pretty controversial to a lot of people but it just came down to a point of preference versus cost of it the pt850 comes in at like 600 bucks when it first came out it was like 700 750 dollars now performance wise it performed great compared to the mg725 the earlier versions of this it's awesome it weighed like like 25% less, it's a really light tool. But in the new day and age, everything's gone away from air tools. We've had the availability of getting a much better lithium ion technology and much better in the way of brushless and cordless tools. So at the point I bought this PT850, I thought I was gonna use it all the time. I ended up using it for a couple months and then upgrading to the Milwaukee half inch impact. Uh, now this one being a PT850, you would think, okay, it's gonna have 850 foot pounds of torque. Nope, it's rated at 810. Technically it's rated at 1190 foot pounds of breakaway torque, but we all know that that's slightly on the exaggerated side, knowing that, you know, a couple of the other tools are putting that out and this one just doesn't match up to it. Now, everyone might say, oh, it's probably your shop air or something else in the way you're using it. You're using an extension. No, I know how to use these things. We run about 150 to 165 PSI of shop air and this thing, it just can't keep up. Now I will give it to Snap-on. They made a great tool. It's held up. I've not had any issues with it at all. I've not had to have it rebuilt whatsoever. So I give them a thumbs up for that one. But as compared to the newer brushless technology, even my Milwaukee 38 stubby impact really has the output of this one. And with those coming in at half the cost or less, plus the fact that they're battery powered, don't have to have the air uh, chuck hooked up on to it all the time, I can take it out onto the lot and use them whenever I want to. This thing just falls short for what a lot of guys in the automotive industry want to use it for. If you're one of the guys though, who really love their air tools and like to use them still in the shop all the time, this is gonna be one of the best ones in the market still. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that match up to it in the way of power versus weight inside of the shop. So I give them a thumbs up for that one. But unfortunately, in my situation, this one just doesn't measure up. Now let's get a little bit more interactive with this one. Down in the comments below, I want to see your guys' opinions, whether it be on these tools, whether you guys want to tell me I'm a big old loser and don't know what I'm talking about with these, or whether you guys agree that these tools are either A, junk, or B, just outdated for the technology in the field that we have currently. In the automotive field, things evolve quite quickly and they evolve all the time. And that's where a lot of the technology of these tools has gotten to the point of where they're just kind of outdated. So uh, even at the point where I purchased some of these not even six or eight months ago, uh, they're already outdated and I don't like to use them or they just don't get used because they don't work how they're really wanted to or advertised or intended to be able to work in the shop atmosphere. Sphere. So let's hear you guys' opinions down there, or if there's any other shop tools that you guys think were a terrible buy for you in the shop atmosphere, go ahead and throw those down in the description as well. Maybe we might be able to go through some of those later on in the future also. Lastly tonight, I wanted to talk to you guys about the toolheadscrate.com. I'll put the website right here for you. Uh, this is the monthly subscription service crate that myself, Mr. JRC54, and the Captain Ron have all come up with. Uh, we ended up putting this one out into the market about six months ago, and this thing is kicking strong. Make sure you guys look for it throughout YouTube. There's a lot of other guys who have been getting them and doing reviews on them. It's a monthly subscription crate service for the mechanics, the DIY guys, or just the in general tool heads and tool lovers all alike. It's going to give you guys a whole lot of monthly tools, coupon codes, stickers, funny items, shirt, tools, memorabilia, 
more tools. That's right. It's going to give you guys a whole lot in the way of things that you really don't know what you need until you guys see it come out on the market. We deal a lot with a lot of tool vendors and right now we're starting to get to the point where we're starting to deal with a lot more companies and things are getting bigger, better, greater every single month. Make sure you guys go over and check out toolheadscrate.com. This month we're running a special 10% off. So if you guys go over to our Instagram page, you guys can see where we can get you 10% off of crates for your first subscription month. Make sure you go and check out www.toolheadscrate.com. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. It's been a really great time. We've got a whole lot more coming up on the channel. We've got a bunch more tool things coming down the pipeline uh, with SP Tools. We've got some really awesome stuff coming out with some manufacturers that you guys have not seen before. More nifty tools are coming down the pipeline also. And to boot, we've got the Duramax build still rocking away. You guys might think that we kind of plateaued on it, but no. We're working with some big companies on doing some even bigger things to that truck than we even originally thought. I never thought that that build would get to where it's at, but it definitely has. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification for when you guys can get notified of me coming out with new awesome content just like this one. I appreciate it. Thanks, and you guys stay awesome.